Hey guys, welcome to Coffee Combos. Lindsay and I have an awareness episode today, which is something that we don't do very often. Um, Our guest has a really unique story to tell. Um, But before we get into that, um, we're going to talk about a couple other things. All the things. Um, Basically, the episode that we did with Megan a while back on IVF awareness and had such a great response from that, we decided to bring someone else on that had a very rare, um, somebody that has a very rare condition and to have her tell her story and how she struggles on a daily basis. Um, I definitely think we can all relate to the struggle in different ways. And, you know, as women, we all have struggles. Yeah. Actually, to your point, I feel like we talk about body images and judging and body shamers a lot on the podcast. That's kind of like a common theme. Yeah. Um, But today's episode is a little bit different. It's for different reasons than what we might experience. Like we get the the body shaming comments for our weight and our size. Just like today, um, I did a question and answer thing on Instagram and somebody had posted and asked me how I had overcome anorexia. And I'm like, well, I was never anorexic. (laughs) Genetics. So um, I don't know. Yeah, I've gained weight probably since I started TV, but I think that's just like age and learning how to eat properly. But it's crazy too because, you know, everyone's just different sizes, different body types and all kinds of stuff. But when it's, you know, none of us can control that. And I think... Our guest today, too, she couldn't control it, and she gets shamed for completely different reasons. It's like, you can't win. Like, she was literally born the way that she she was. Mm -hmm. So are we, though. Yeah. I mean, maybe less me. (laughs) I just like to eat. (laughs) (laughs) But it is so hard, you know, getting so much backlash for your weight, or if you wear a shirt and it, like, looks wrong, somebody says something about it, or, you know you shouldn't dress that way or you shouldn't be this way as a mother. You shouldn't be that way. It's like, who are you? And we, I feel like you and I get it a lot because you are so much thinner than I am and I'm a bigger girl. So then putting us next to each other is like, it makes, makes me it look more smaller exaggerated. and then Kale look bigger. bigger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. So when you got that comment, did you like think anything? Did you say anything? Like, how did you react to it? What do you, how do you deal with it? Um, my first instinct was kind of like, okay, that's kind of hurtful because I've never been been anorexic. So I'm kind of like, okay, that's a complete judgment. However, my second thought was I should open up the refrigerator and show them like everything that I do eat because I, you almost feel like a sense of, I need to like explain myself. Yeah. But even though I know I don't need to explain myself. Yeah, it's weird. I read this thing on Twitter yesterday and it was like, stop explaining to your stop explaining yourself to people who don't pay your bills. Yeah, exactly. But then also if even if we don't explain ourselves, we get the comments. We continue to get the comments. Or if we do explain ourselves, we still get the comments. So I don't really know. And then if you explain yourself, then you get the comments of why are you explaining yourself? And it's like, well bitch, you just asked. <laughs> So like, I'm just telling you, you know? Yeah, you can't win. And so then it just gets to a point where it's like, okay, then you just don't answer the questions at all. You just avoid it and act like it never happened. Right. This is true. You know? Yeah. So I'm just like kind of over it. Yeah. No, I hear you loud and clear. I just feel like as a woman, I wouldn't go on any type of platform and like talk about someone's body or their condition or anything like that like as women we should be helping lift each other up and not beating each other down yeah and you know we've talked about this before and how women should support other women but those are the ones that are tearing you down it's crazy it's because all of these women are mothers a lot of them are mothers that are doing this and you're kind of like okay do you not have better things to do because i certainly know i do <laughs> you know and i i'm not going to take the time of day to go on somebody's social media and talk badly about them but when i used to get like eating disorder comments or whatever um before we started podcasting it definitely bothered me more because i didn't feel like i had an outlet to be able to have like a community and now that we do have that it makes you feel more comfortable because you don't feel alone right and you know 
not that I want to be in company with somebody who's also getting bullied like you, but I feel like we're in good company. Like right. I'm shamed for being too skinny and you're shamed for being overweight, you right. know, and mm-hmm. it's not, not like I want you to be shamed, but it's almost like, okay, well, we're in the same boat. Like we're in this together. Like we're doing this together. Yeah. But it also just proves you can't really win because you're too thin. I'm too big. There's, where's the middle, yeah. where's the happy medium. And I just think it's so important to bring awareness, you know, for things that, people maybe aren't really aware that they're doing, you know? I mean, maybe they are very well, aware. I've, I've talked about it before. So like when I've been in a bad place, I realized like not online, I wouldn't talk shit online, but like I definitely said more negative, I definitely said more negative things about people that I was around when I was miserable myself. And I didn't realize that I was doing that until I became happier. And I was like, oh, wow, like I really didn't say very nice things about that person. And I realized it was because I was going through something. And so part of me, and I know it sounds super cliche, but it's like, it says more about them than it says about me, you know? And so I kind of feel like that, but it's the truth. Like I was going through some shit. And so like, I was not saying good things about anything. Like I was miserable. Yeah. They don't realize that they're miserable. They'll go online and tell you that they're happy and they have this and they have that, but they aren't actually happy. Yeah, because I just think it takes a very miserable person to go on and just talk about somebody that they don't even know. And I think that it's even, you know, we were talking about this earlier that a lot of people don't like the fact that we get to do a job or, you know, have a career of just being us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that probably a lot of people struggle or hate us for. Right. Or maybe they like us for. I don't know. I think it's a little of both. Yeah. It's like a, it's probably like (laughs) 50-50. Probably. (laughs) Actually, probably like more people hate us. Yeah. that might More (laughs) people hate me than you, actually. (laughs) Okay. So let's take a second to talk about something that makes both of our lives way easier and that's HelloFresh. I know we're always talking about them, but that's just because they're so good and convenient. Yep. We love this service. And if you're not familiar, here's the scoop. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so that you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. Just recently, actually as of yesterday, I ordered two meals um, for us for next week, which was the hot honey chicken, which I've never tried before, and then the meatloaf a la mom, which I thought the name was so cute, and it comes with roasted veggies. Um, Meatloaf is definitely a big winner in my house, so I will try those recipes and let you know how I like them. But everything that I've ever made from HelloFresh has been absolutely delicious. So you guys know I'm not a fan of going to the grocery store. I talk about it all the time. And that's one reason why HelloFresh is a game changer for us. It eliminates the planning and the shopping stage of the dinner chaos. And you guys know that my house is pure chaos. So they have three plans that you can choose from, classic, veggie, and family. So you can switch if you need to and if you just want to try something different. Um, but it's great if you're in a recipe rut, which is me most of the time. Um, and you don't have to worry about like the extra time and trying to figure out what's for dinner. Um, I have a lot of picky eaters in my house. Um, I think everyone but Lux. Um, so... These recipes from HelloFresh are something that everyone in the family will like. For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, you can go to HelloFresh.com slash CoffeeConvos80 and enter CoffeeConvos80. Again, for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash CoffeeConvos80 and enter CoffeeConvos80. Okay, so we're going to welcome Taylor onto our show, and you guys can hear her unique story yourself, and we hope that you you love it. I, we hope that you love her story as much as we do. So welcome to the show, Taylor. We're happy to have you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah. Truly, I appreciate it. I honestly, when I saw your Instagram, I was so intrigued by not knowing what was going on <laughs> that I wanted to know all of She the, sent it to me, and I was I like, what? What's happening? Like, what yeah. is that? Yes. I don't understand. I so please tell our listeners um, about yourself. Okay. So um, I'm a singer-songwriter, and mm-hmm. I've been in the business a long time. My grandfather used to run Universal Studios, so I kind of grew up in the business. But I was born with a rare genetic condition called chimerism. And my entire life, I my torso is split in two, basically, to just kind of sum it up. Uh, I have two different colors of skin pigmentation. Um, each side is a different color. And I went my entire life, you know, a billion doctors. What is this? What is it? You know, birthmark. Birthmark. Just must be a birthmark. 
And then probably around 15, 16, I started getting sick all the time. And I'm kind of like a natural hippie, you know, really take care of myself, clean diet, this, that, whatever. I also was a dancer for 20 years. You know, I'm really physical and I'm just like, why why am I getting sick all the time? Like no matter what I do. Like what kind of sick? Like throwing up or? So pretty much like chronic sinus infections, migraine headaches. Um, you know, I, I, I'm very sensitive to everything like medications. I, if I even took like a cold medication, I get like, you know, five side effects from it. Just a lot of stuff that shouldn't be happening on a daily basis. Like a sure. weakened immunity. Yeah, yeah. Very weak immunity. Yes. Mm-hmm. Any kind of stress, lack of sleep. Someone might get, you know, a little sore throat. I'll get strep throat. You know, wow, wow. I mean, it just was crazy. Tonsillitis. I mean, it was constant. So coincidentally, about nine years ago, I saw this show and it talked about this condition called chimerism. And there was one photo on the show, but it was of a baby. And the stomach looked just Just like like my stomach. And I mean, I almost fell over. I just thought, pause. I don't even know if there was TiVo then, but I'm like, what? What? That's That's my stomach. And, um... Total coincidence, about three days later, I had a doctor's appointment with a brand new uh, ears, nose, and throat specialist, because since I'm a singer, and when I went there, he was asking routine questions like, do you have any health issues? I told him, yeah, I'm sick all the time, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, um, my mom was actually with me at the appointment, and she goes, tell him about what you saw on the TV show last night. And I'm thinking, stop embarrassing me. Like, what does yeah. this have to do? I was going to say that. You didn't think to like say something? No, like, not at all. Maybe bring that up? No, because it was an ENT. So oh, I'm just thinking like, okay. you know, yeah. being sick, sick. And my mom's like, just tell him what you saw on the TV. So I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. It looks just like my stomach. And he goes, wait a minute. I am completely familiar with chimerism. He said, I used to be the doctor for like Ripley's Believe It or Not for medical rarities. He said, I used to work under a guy years ago when he first started training who did only like medical rarities. So he's like, I know all about chimerism. And he said, I basically just from seeing your stomach will know because I guess it has to be like a certain pattern, and, sure. you know, certain things. So I think he thought that I was kind of... Loopy. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> like, you're self-diagnosing. Yeah, yeah you know what yeah. I mean. He's, and he told me he's like, you know, I've never seen one in real life. Like it's never happened. Like through my whole medical oh, career. Wow. And because he said, you know, I guess with chimerism, a lot of people can be chimeras, but the physical traits are very far few between that people have them. So people, it's more common than we would know. So oh, it can be way more common. It's just that usually you're not going to know unless if there's a physical trait. And the physical traits can be the the two colors of skin pigmentation on the torso. I've been told two different color eyes, but it cannot be confused with heptochromia, which is a separate condition that can cause two different colors of the eyes to be. Um, And then in male chimeras, I've been told if they have dark hair, there can be silver patches and it's from the time that they're like a baby. So those are the physical traits that I've been told. But it's kind of hard because I knew a girl in high school that had two different color eyes, and I knew a boy that had dark hair that I've had definitely like the a silver gray spot. the silver patches. Yeah. And they said it was like a birthmark though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. See, even though chimerism shouldn't be rare, it is rare because it's just when I when I found out, which was about nine years ago, when I'd go on Google. The only thing you could find was the one episode that I saw from like nine years ago on TV. It was a one hour episode. I think it was like on Discovery Channel or something. And then the only other thing is that the word chimerism comes from Greek mythology and it's known as a monster. Oh. So it's known as like a monster that's three. So it's like a head of a lion, a body of a goat, and a tail of a snake. Oh, wow. That's literally all I could find on Google. And I could not find one thing. So the whole condition, you know, because it's just, you know, it's weird. It's just weird. You know what I mean? It's like, how do you tell someone, oh, hi, I have a condition that's named after a monster and my stomach is like two different colors. Sure. I mean, it's crazy. And then my particular case of chimerism is linked to causing me severe autoimmune deficiencies because my two sets of genetic makeup... Uh, they don't, they don't, um, like mesh basically. Yes. And it doesn't mean every case of chimerism is going to have that. Some can mesh. It's just my particular case. However, the, you know, whatever cells did fuse, blah, blah, blah. And just to kind of go back to, so what chimerism is, is it's fraternal 
twin eggs, not identical, fraternal. And usually it happens in the earlier stages of pregnancy, the two eggs fuse together. Okay. So let me stop you there. Yep. Did your mom know that she was pregnant with twins? So my mom was also, she was a hippie mom. My mother never had an ultrasound her oh, entire pregnancy. My God. But were there two heartbeats or would it have been prior to the heartbeat? Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. It, it could have possibly been maybe earlier than that. Sure. You know, I don't know. I have heard stories though that chimerism, the fusion can take place a little later in pregnancy. And if it does, some people will have like an extra uh, ovary or they'll oh have gosh. a cyst and they'll get the cyst removed and the cyst will have like teeth. Oh, I've actually seen stories like Wait, that. What? Yeah. I've definitely seen stories yeah. like that. Yeah. Because you're like, it's the other like, yes. twin. twin. Yeah. yeah. And then people don't know this, but usually a hermaphrodite comes from a girl and a, and a boy, boy twin that fuse together in later stages of pregnancy. That makes sense. That and makes a lot most sense. people still to this day don't know it, I guess, or don't realize it. So when you were talking to the ENT about this, did he kind of confirm it in person? Yeah. So what happened was he said, listen, I don't do genetics anymore. He said, but after just looking at your stomach, he's like, I'm telling you just from your stomach, you're a chimera. There's absolutely no way around it that you're not. And then what happened was he told me that there is not a specific test for chimerism. Okay, and that was this my is, next question. This is something that I really am trying to spread with awareness because I get from all my fans and people that write me like a million times a day, what test do I do for chimerism? And there's not. There is not a single test. But how Even do they with know like blood sure. work? Because you would have two sets of... Okay, so you can test blood, you can test hair, you can test saliva, and there is a chance it will show up. But there's also a chance that won't. you absolutely can be one and it will not, not show, show up. up. So what you usually have to do if you do not have a physical trait is they biopsy all your organs. They have to do your kidneys. They have to do your wow. liver. And I'm sorry, I'm not going through that. Well, I yeah, was going to say, I mean, lot. there's not really a reason to do that unless you were getting sick. Not you specifically, yeah. but for someone who would think that they may or they may, may be. Yeah. That's right. They would have to go through all of this and... That's right. They would it would be obviously um, elective. Absolutely. Oh yeah, it would totally oh, wow. be elective. So then, what's the real point unless you're sick? That's right. And some people, like the two cases that they had on the TV show, like nine years ago, they were both accidental. How they found it. One was a fraternity test, and the judge is like, "Those aren't your kids." She's like, "Um, I gave birth to them. Like, I have it on video. Like, yeah, they're my mine. kids." Well, it's because technically her twin sister was the mother of her children. She would be considered the aunt. Yes. Oh, wait, what? So wait, if you had a baby... Yes, there's a chance it can be. We won't know until I do have a child, but after my child is born, we can test to see if I it's come gen- out the mother yeah. or the mm-hmm. aunt, so to speak. So that was one of the cases. Wait, I'm... Because she has two... Two sets, sets of, of <gasps> DNA. Gen- oh, yes. my gosh. So... Oh. Yeah. So either... When she has a baby, you could be the aunt, the aunt or the mom or the mom. Mm -hmm. So we won't know until I have a child, but that that is one of the cases that came out about nine years ago, but that person, she did not have any physical abnormality. And then I don't know if she had health issues or not, but so she had no idea. So they did find hers. I would guess maybe through blood or something. Okay, so I need to take a second to talk about something that's really popular in my house. Obviously, we all use them, which is our Quip toothbrushes. I got these for my boys for Christmas last year, and it's been so awesome because they refill them every three months, so the kids are pumped. Quip toothbrushes are great for travel. They have a removable mount that goes on your mirror, and you can just pop it off the mirror, use it as a travel cap, and take your Quip toothbrush and your luggage. It's so easy. So mounting them on the mirror eliminates a lot of the sink clutter, and for those old electric bulky toothbrushes that take up a lot of space in your bathroom. I love that you can replace them on a dentist recommended schedule every three months, like I said a little bit before, um, for only $5. So these are super convenient and they do a great job of telling my boys how long to brush on each side. So it pulses and lets you know when it's time to switch. I love everything about Quip. They have truly made brushing so easy, and I'm so excited about Quip's Kid Electric Toothbrushes. I just ordered this for Jackson, and it's just like their original toothbrush, 
but it's tweak to help young brushers develop a grown-up routine without all of the childish gimmicks. So that's why I love Quip and why they're backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash coffee right now, you get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash coffee. Okay, so the woman that you were just talking about, she had to get a paternity test for the kids. Yes. And they said that the kids weren't even hers. Yeah, they're like, those are not your children. So she, I'm assuming it must have been through blood with her. So she's very fortunate that that did come out so easily. Um, The second case was, I think the lady, it was something like she needed some kind of transplant and her family members, you know, were going to help donate. And they're like, that's not your son. She's like... Yes, it is. It was the same sort of thing. And she ended up being the aunt of her So wait, son. do all chimeras have two? Yes. So all chimeras have two sets of genetic makeup, which are DNA and cells. And then every chimera is supposed to have two sets of blood cells and two sets of immune cells. And even I myself, when I first started awareness, which was a little less than two years ago, I was just shooting out stuff that like the doctors had told me, but I've worked with a couple geneticists now. So uh, even myself, when I've, you know, went on some talk shows, I think I said two immune systems and two blood streams because that's what I was told. Now it's been clarified to me that it's supposed to be two sets of blood cells and two sets of immune cells. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so well, how did your mom feel when she found all of this out? Because obviously, as just as shocked as you are to find yeah. out that you're a chimera, yeah. how did she feel that she had twins? Well, I think for her, when, so my mom had me at home on top of everything. Yeah. She oh did not gosh. have me in a hospital. She had That's me at amazing. home. She did everything natural, took no drugs for you know the birth, prior, everything. Love that. She's crazy. So when I came out and my stomach was like this, she just freaked. She was just like, oh my gosh. Oh, she saw it right so off the bat. Oh, right the immediately. day I was born, my stomach was like this. That's another thing I'd like to address to everybody because I get questioned about that all the time. So my stomach was like this since the day I was born. So my mom panicked because sure. immediately she thought she did something wrong. You know, what, you know, did the midwives do something, you know, right, the right. whole thing. And, um, she ended up bringing me to a doctor a little down the road and it started, I mean, I don't want to say my age, but you know, a long time ago, just as a baby, oh, I guess it's a birthmark. Sure. I mean, yeah. that's you, know, what I would you can't be. really, yeah. if you're not sick and yeah. nothing's happening yeah. and it doesn't seem like anything's it's weird. I mean, what birthmark. else? Right. Yeah. And just imagine like having a baby because we've had kids and the child comes out and obviously you're checking 10 fingers. 10 that's toes, right. Yeah. You know, all of that like stuff. All yeah. And you're like, what is this? And it's unexplainable. Yeah. yeah. It's totally unexplainable. And so what happened was, um, as I, and I have already shared this publicly and people say that I'm lying all the time about it. So, and I'm one of those where I'm like, you just, you just keep saying that because this is the truth. So probably starting around like six or seven, I used to ask my mom all the time if I was a twin, like just like, it's almost like, like um, an obsession. Like used, you knew, but it, yeah, you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. I just used to come to her and say, you know, am I a twin? Did I have a twin sister? And then, you know how little kids are like always obsessed looking like their girlfriends? Yeah. yeah. We all go through that. Mine was like next level up of obsession. Like Which, every friend we had to look exactly like, like wear the same things, have our hair the same way. And my mom, you know, she's one of those where she'll just let me, you know, she, she likes me to have freedom even as, you know, a little yeah. child. So she just let me do whatever, but she could never under understand the twin thing like where it came from Mm. so when we did so i was probably about 26 i went more than half my life not knowing why i was sick not knowing why my stomach was like this so when i finally found out it was so it was like i could breathe for the first time right like confirmation everything closure almost yeah it was yeah no it was like you found like the piece that was missing almost literally that's right thank you because that's exactly what it was and i think then when my mom found out You know, I mean, for both of us, of course, when you really think about it, it's sad because it's like, whoa, I could have had a twin. She could have had a second daughter. Right. I could have had this like partner in crime to go through life with. But on the other hand, it was liberating and I, it made me feel better because my whole life. Are you an only child? So I am an only child outside of that. I I wasn't raised as one though. Um, I, I had a girlfriend from two years old on that basically lived with us and that I was raised with. So I grew up with like an older sister, but I'm technically, yeah. 
from, I guess, like DNA, would you yes. know it was definitely a female yeah. twin? Okay. That's, and I get asked that all the time. Yeah. People are always like, how does she know it's a sister? It could have been a boy. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay. So you guys are actually the first place that I'm sa- stating this publicly. Oh, cool. Awesome. So I had chromosome testing done. Okay. And when you get your chromosomes tested, if it was a girl and boy twin, mm-hmm. I'm going to have, I'm going to have female and female male chromosome. chromosomes. I only have female. Got it. So okay. we definitely would have been girl, girl. And that's why Throughout, you know, spreading awareness, I always say my sister. Yeah. So, so, so girl, crazy. girl, fraternal. Girl, girl, fraternal. So how does that... So when you're identical, you're in the same womb, right? This, um, this I believe it's uh, one... No, it's like one it's um, one egg that splits. Thank right, you. Right, right, right. Egg, thank you. But wouldn't yes. it be two separate sacs, two? I mean, one, sep- one, one sac, sac and then fraternal is two. Yes. So it's then completely two separate. When you absorbed it, how does that... So basically what it means is it's like you have two people literally like under one roof, so to speak, you know? Sure. So it's like how you react to caffeine and how your body reacts to caffeine is completely different. Well, I have to deal with that in one body. So everything I do, (laughs) it, my body reacts in some sort of way that's not always normal. So I'm highly sensitive and kind of to wrap back around like other ways as far as to with testing with chimerism, I just thought I'd throw it out there. So kind of along my journey, I got immune testing done because I was so sick all the time. So when they got my test back, they're like, the, I, went, I was uh, working with an immunologist and she's like, I have never seen anyone's immune system this low unless if you have like cancer and you don't have cancer because we tested you and she kind of freaked like I've never seen this. So she asked me specifically, can you forward your results to the geneticist? Because maybe this has to do with chimerism. So we did. And my doctor said, yeah, not all chimeras will have this, but if they do, it's right you know, at the bracket where it should be. Sure. And then I got food testing done and they tested me for 150 items. And I came back with sensitivities to everything outside of nine items. So the same thing, like the doctor, the blood bank, they're like, we've never seen anything like this. Like, will she release her records publicly? Cause we want to have board meetings. And so I brought it to my geneticist and he goes, oh, well, yeah, it's picking up the two immune cells. It's like two different immune systems, what each immune system would be allergic to. That's why it's basically double. So did you go public with these? So I never like actually put my papers public, but I've just been willing to share this information when I started spreading awareness. That's amazing. That's crazy. So like, yeah, so would it's just, your sister be the other col- other color of the side of your body? You know, I don't know. I've asked my geneticist that, and they just said that it it just has something to do with the cells, the skin, you know, the skin tone, pigmentation, sure. you know, how many of what cells absorbed each other, you know. So I I don't really know, but I'm sure in some cases of chimerism, um, I have heard stuff like maybe someone is like totally two different nationalities, sure, and one side of them might be darker, the other side lighter. I'm so fair that I think that's why mine's red and white. But maybe if I, you know, was like a different nationality, maybe it would be like dark skin and light skin. Right. You know? And is it always on the torso? Yes. So it's um, on my whole front side and then it wraps on my side and then it wraps on my back only up until my spine. But the back and the side are blotchy. The okay. front is more solid outside of by my hip bone. Got it. So, and another thing that happens is um, when I'm really cold, it's very prominent and very visible. When my body temperature is lukewarm, it it tones down a little bit. Um, when I get really, really hot, it gets very, very bright as well. It's always there no matter what, but it can sometimes go- Like flare up. Yeah, right. like yeah, really insane. And then other times it's, yeah, not as much. This is so wild. I have never heard of anything like this. Okay, so let me update you guys on my skincare routine. Um, You guys know that it's super frustrating for me. I have acne. I struggle with blemishes. But I have a secret to the skin problem, and that is BioClarity. And BioClarity is a three-step regimen for getting clean, smooth skin. 
It's such a great system if you want to get clear skin and it's non-abrasive and the products are 100% vegan, cruelty-free, and paraffin-free. Plus, they offer 100% risk-free money-back guarantee, so there's no reason not to give it a try. So I use the clear skin routine. As I said before, I do struggle with acne and blemishes. And this just makes my skin feel super soft and just like blemish free. So obviously there's no reason not to love it. Honestly, I just ordered the clear skin routine because I've been having, for whatever reason, breakouts around my chin that I just can't get rid of. So I hope it helps me as much as it's helped you. Get healthier, more radiant skin by going to bioclarity.com. And right now for our listeners, you will save 40% off on a skincare routine plus an additional 15% off everything on their website. That's an incredible deal, but you need to enter our code COFFEE at checkout. Just go to bioclarity.com and get 40% off skincare routines plus an additional 15% off everything on their website when you use our code COFFEE at checkout. I, I can tell you guys a couple other weird things if yeah, you want. Tell us. Yeah, let's okay. hear it. Let's yeah. hear it. Okay. So I have this tooth on my left side, which is the chimera side, that when I was young, um, it's behind my other tooth. And the tooth kept growing. And like it wouldn't stop growing. So the dentist finally had to, he started like shaving off the tooth. And I think it just kind of like deadened, you know, the, the, the nerves. The nerve. mm-hmm. And it finally stopped growing. But so that's on my chimera side. Also, I have my belly button pierced and it's done in the chimera cells. I can wear any type of jewelry in it. Not allergic to anything. My ears are my own cells. I can only wear white gold. I also used to have this pierced, white gold only. Like highly allergic to any kind of like metal outside that of white is gold. so wild. And then I get bug bites. So one side, they swell like major. Yeah, my son, ha- he's like allergic to bug bites that's, essentially. That's yeah. me yeah. On, on the chimera side. I'm not, they're normal on the right side. It's That's like what about crazy. if you're like so tan, if you're like bathing suit beach stuff? Yeah, so I get asked that all the time. So um, the red side can burn a little bit easier than the other side, um, but not anything too too extreme. Like I can still tan. It's sure. just it will get redder mm-hmm. than the other side. Um, and then also the left side of my body is bigger than the right side of my body. My left leg is a little taller. The other one's shorter. I mean, it's, does that mean your twin would have been bigger? Than it's you? weird. I, you know, I don't know. I haven't even asked the genetic. He he knows. <clears throat> excuse me. That you know the sides are different sizes, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess maybe, maybe because she said that her the the stuff doesn't mesh. So maybe that's just yeah. like because had it had it been a completely separate body, maybe they would have been the same size. But because they're fused together, mm-hmm. it's kind of like trying to fit its way like a puzzle into. It's yeah. it really is like it's so like even um. I, I recently, I've, I've been on birth control a very long time uh, because I have endometriosis. Oh, wow. Okay. And I just went off of it a couple months ago because it was making me so ill, all my immune problems, like the birth control. People don't even know this, just FYI. Birth control for even a healthy person is an immune suppressant. So if you put someone on it who has immune issues already, like me over here, it's like it just flares all my autoimmune issues like daily. And I was doing it because if I wasn't on it, I was in the hospital like all the time from my endometriosis. So it was worth it to me. But I was getting so sick with immune stuff, I finally went off of it. And I'm, you know, gaining some weight right now because my hormones are fluctuating. Sure. The right side of me is gaining more weight on my waist than the left side. So I have like this thing sticking out and like it's, I'm just trying to make a point like the sides are different. (laughs) Like it's so so weird. And is it like everything on the side? So like your hands, like. Um, you know what? I haven't really noticed. No, I don't think so. My hands and arms kind of feel the same. It's more like from here kind of down yeah. where everything and that's where my thing is is it starts here yeah. so wow so yeah. wild so yeah, yeah it's that weird. would be so hard to go through life to know that like there's something missing and like you don't know yeah what it is, what it is. and it's weird you, you know? say that because i really truly always did feel that i always felt like i was missing something and yeah. it was really weird because only my mother knows this but when i used to see girl girl twins and now when i was young yes, right. and, now, <laughs> and now all of you guys but 
when I'd see girl, girl twins, I'd get, I'd feel sad. And it was literally as a child, but like boy, boy twins or girl, boy twins had didn't no bother interest. You. Had no interest. Like that did not care. Wild. And that is Well, they say honest. like twin, I, I have uh, a couple sets of twins in my family. They just, even when we're not all together in the same, like one will tell me something and then some, the other one will say something very, very similar. Like, yeah. Two completely different days. I wonder if it would have been this like the yeah. same. Like you just know that That's you had right. a twin, yeah, subconsciously or whatever. Yeah, it has to I be something that. subconscious or like something um, genetic, like in your That's makeup right. to just like make Are you there? feel that. That's how I feel. I do. Are it, there other twins in your family? Yeah. So actually, oh, wow. my mom's wow. side has twins, and it there. It's supposedly supposed to be like every other generation or yeah, something. Yeah, I've heard that. It and it would have been her turn. So it all makes sense. So, yeah. yeah, I know that wouldn't, that's, I'm, I'm so glad actually you brought that up. Cause I never talk about that. Yeah. I never even thought to. And that was one of the first things we did. Like, are there twins in our family? And, and they're, yeah. And they are, right. and they're on my mom's side. So yeah. yeah. And I think there's two sets. I think it's a girl, girl, and then a girl boy. Oh, wow. Now so. I've heard that only, um, it's either fraternal or identical twins are genetic, you know, like. You can be passed down, oh, but I forget what I one it is. You and know you what know I what? mean? I should know this, and I, I, don't, I don't know. All know the that. twins in my family are fraternal. I think oh, it's okay. fraternal twins. But that I don't know. Are, Interesting. I think fraternal twins are like, like a yeah, genetically like it can be well, passed because down. Identical is the egg splitting, so that's that makes, right. that yeah. makes sense. Like yeah. that's probably a lot more rare. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It's huh. fraternal twins that. I'm are, so glad you brought that up because I never really thought about that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, one was boy girl, so that would be, and then I think the other set was girl girl. But I don't, I don't know if I'll, I'll have to find that out now. Like if they're fraternal or not. So did, how did the rest of? Oh, go ahead. Did your mom ever feel like once she found this out about you, mm-hmm. did she ever feel like a sense of like loss? Yes, or, yeah. she did. Yeah, I think she felt that even almost to a degree more so than I did. And you guys are both moms. I'm not a mom yet, hopefully someday. But so I, I could imagine though, just looking at it more as a mom. Right. Like it, that's really, I mean, that's your child. You know, for me, it's more like, yeah, that would have been my sister. That would have been incredible. But you yeah. know, she's in me now. That's yeah. what's so funny too. Yeah. You know, people don't realize cause everyone's like, you know, Oh, she's, she's gone. And especially when I've said like, Oh, it, it, it felt good to, you know, finally find out. Find out. Mm-hmm. And people are like, that's dis- you know, that's disgusting. How can you say that? Like you lost a sister. It's like, you guys, she's in me. Right. I yeah. look she's at her you, every, literally. yeah, I have to look at her every you know day before I get in and out yeah. of the shower. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel like, yes, I've lost her physical being, you know, but I have a reminder of her every yeah, single day, day you yeah. know, and she's part of me. And my mom used to kid, I'm, I'm into astrology and I'm a so Scorpio. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What sign are you? I'm a Pisces. That's my but my best. middle son, what? That's my best friend of 25 years. Oh, <laughs> my, my middle son's a Scorpio and he is a spitfire. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's when, yes, when's that's his so day? Crazy. Um, November 16th. Oh my gosh. She's okay, in the numerology too. Oh yeah. Have you heard that's of numerology? Me. I'm, no. More of like the hippie side of like us two. Yeah. Oh, like my I'm gosh, the hippier. Yeah, yeah. Host. What are what are you? Hippier host. I'm She's a Virgo. A Virgo. That's your mom. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> my two like best friends <laughs> in the world are like sitting in front of me. So that funny. is, I'm I'm so into That's it. So That's funny. amazing. Yes. So, but yeah, my mom always used to kid when I was young, and you know I'm a Scorpio, so I am. I'm you know a handful mm-hmm. in general. But she always used to be like, "You're like having two, Taylor." Like she always used to say that, that to me, just so, like kidding. That's wow. so yeah. So, yeah. So then when we did find this out, we were like, "Well, I guess you weren't kidding," you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I need to tell you guys about this super go-to comfortable flat for work and every day. It's Rothy's. Rothy's shoes are stylish, sustainable, and comfortable enough for everyday wear, and you can wear them pretty much anywhere. Um, The best part is that they're washable, so you can throw them in the wash and make them as good as new. Rothy's is the everyday flat for life on the go. It's stylish, classic, comfortable, and it comes in four styles. The flat, the point, the loafer, the sneaker for women and girls, and my personal favorite is the sneaker. It will blow your mind that they're made from recycled plastic water bottles because they're the softest shoes that you'll ever put on your feet, and you can feel good about wearing them. So I got the camo sneakers because I do love like just like a comfortable slip-on shoe. Um, And you guys know I love camo. So it worked out for me. 
We love our Rothy's and we know that you will too. Right now, Rothy's has an amazing deal for our listeners. Use code COFFEE and get free shipping, no minimum. That's free shipping and free returns and exchanges on your Rothy's shoes. And trust me, you won't want to return them. So go to rothys.com, R-O-T-H. Ys.com and enter our code COFFEE to get your cute shoes and free shipping. This is obviously a no-brainer, the comfortable, stylish, and sustainable shoes that you need to have. And did we mention free shipping? So get yourself a pair today at rothys.com, promo code COFFEE, while the deal lasts. I know you've been on the doctors. Yes. Yeah. I went, um, that, so, well, so what happened was, um, I was pursuing my music career really heavily. I was working with a label a couple years ago. I was in development with them. And, what kind of music? Yeah. So it's still considered pop, but I'm really into like old school blues, mm-hmm. like Amy Winehouse, hands down yeah. was yeah. my girl, oh, yes. like just on a vocal level and like on a vocal level, Christina Aguilera, L King, like they're my, just, I'm just Love. obsessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're total inspirations vocally. So my music is, uh, it's still considered pop, but it has more of like a bluesy kind of jazz flair sure. to it. But um, very long story short, I ended up having to walk away from the label. It just wasn't the right situation anymore. And it crushed me. I mean, because I worked so hard all year with these people and I got really sick. And then right after that, I had a bunch of other just life hardships that just nailed me back mm-hmm. to back. Mm-hmm. And I got so ill and, you know, I, I had to go to the doctors and do all these tests. And then that's when we really started seeing more of the chimera stuff kind of coming out and results. And finally, I just went, you know what? I have known for nine years that I'm a chimera and I have completely kept it a secret outside of my best friends and family. Nobody knows I'm sick. I was going to ask you how did you, did you date? Did you explain it to them? So, How did that work? What yeah. did that look like? <laughs> That's so funny you say that. So I had, um, believe it or not, I fell in love very young mm-hmm. and I dated the same man on and off for 20 years. Oh, wow. And so he- Sounds like me. Yeah. So he wow. was the like real <laughs> love of my life, mm-hmm. but we had some really big breakups and some long- you know, breakups. So when we would do that, of course I would date other people. So with him, it was great because he knew I didn't have to say anything, but every time I had someone new and if, you know, we had got for far enough in the relationship, you know, and you know, got to, you know, a, a base, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it clean, Third right? base yeah. you know, it would be like, Oh, what's that? So you, you know? didn't tell them prior to that? Not always. No. Oh, Once wow, in okay. a while I might, sure. but sometimes it was like, I don't even know if it's going to go there, you know, cause I so don't even know like how much really I like them. Yeah. To talk about it. So I would always <laughs> really, like, I feel like that's so important to like, but see, for me, it's personal. Yeah. See, I'm like the most secretive private person. Okay. That's that why, <laughs> that's why it took me so long to, to go public with this because I thought, you know, it's going to ruin my career. No one wants to work. You know, when you're, if you're like Selena Gomez, you're already established like sure. big time. Yeah. And then you're like, I have Something health happens. problems. Correct. You have support, but when you're still kind of breaking in, people are hesitant. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like your liability. Like yeah. I'm not working with a sick right, person. Right. And I, I, I love, you know, my music so much. It's like my everything. And I thought I, I can't, I can't risk it. But after I went through these hardships, I I really did. I had this huge wake up call where I'm like, Taylor, you can keep pretending that you're not a chimera, you know, that you don't have autoimmune as much as you want, but you do. And you could be helping people. What are you doing? Like you went 26 years feeling helpless because you couldn't find one thing online. Not one doctor could help you. And now you could be helping other people that are in your position. Right. Advocating. Yeah. yeah. And you're too fearful because you're so obsessed with your music. You're scared that, you know, it will ruin it or that like personal relationships, you know, certain people won't want to be involved with me because I look like a you know, different person, (laughs) you know, I don't, I don't maybe fit the mold physically, right? you know, and people are weird, you know, people are are out there, you know, they have certain standards. And so finally I just decided, you know what, I've had enough, you know, I've always been really like, this is who I am, take it or leave it. That was the only part of my life that I never, that I just kept it behind doors. And I just finally thought like, you're not even being true to you. Like you've always right. been like, this is me, take it or leave it. So I just thought, where it, where do I want to do this for the first time? And I just thought, I'm going to go on the doctor show <laughs> because I just thought it would be a great place to spread this awareness. But also at that point, 
the the only doctor I was working with didn't do genetics anymore. So he was still helping me as like a friend because I, you know, had gone to him nine years. But he was like, you need a real geneticist. And I'm like, you know, or up to date. And I'm thinking, I I don't even know where to go for that kind of help. Mm -hmm. So I thought that would be a good place as well. Like maybe they have a geneticist that they can set me up with. So did that kind of help you then from there? Or did you not get the maybe help or reaction that you would have wanted? Yeah. So, um, cause I also was on that show for different reasons and I, nothing came of it. Wait, why were you on the doctor? I was on the oh, doctors twice. You for are two just like things. my new, new, new best friend now. Because <laughs> like nothing ever I have came of it. So I said, okay. So quiet about this and I'm kind of over it. I, nothing came out of it for a Mm -hmm. year. I had email after email after email, like it was horrific. And then finally I got offered to do this other TV show and I really wanted to take it to spread awareness and they would not let me go on the show unless if I had my geneticist. So finally I had to call them and say, if you guys don't figure something out, like I'm trying to help other people. You right. guys promised me that, you know, a geneticist for the rest of my life. And, and I they didn't get it to you. And he, <gasps> the, the guy was not returning my emails for the longest time. The craziest thing is that I have another friend who's in reality TV who went on, not the doctors, she went on Dr. Phil. They mm. also promised her brother this, that, the third for yeah. his mental health and all of that stuff for, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know what the time period was and they never followed through. Well, and That's you know, so Dr. Crappy. Phil owns the doctor show. Makes oh, sense. Oh, I did not know oh, that. Wow. Yes. Okay. Just so we're bringing awareness to more than one thing today. <laughs> <laughs> we're bringing awareness and we're to spilling all the tea. We're getting <laughs> wild over here. Oh my gosh. Poor <laughs> Phil. Yeah. And you know, it's like, I, I really have, I've stayed quiet this whole time, but it's been really hurtful. It's been really frustrating. Yeah. And you know, so finally after after I came to them and said, I want to do this thing, like you guys better figure this out. Then they got him to finally contact me. And we did, he kind of like turned his tune. We were working together for a little bit. I was so grateful. I felt so excited. And then after we worked together, it was like, once again, again yeah. off the radar. And that's been it. So well, I because will they be... get what they want for their show. Thank and then they're you. kind of like, they promise you Thank all you. of these things. Yeah. And then they're like, they don't okay, follow through. They don't follow yeah. through. They just did it so they could just, you know, boost their business or do I whatever. mean, that's pretty much all of reality TV. Yeah. 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 And all the networks that yeah. come Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. you guys are right. You're so right. Yeah. I'm glad though you brought that up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, guys. So girls, answer this question. Are your underwear making you really happy at this moment? Because mine are. And the reason is because I wear me undies and they're so soft. You might think that we're crazy for getting this excited about underwear, but they are made with micromodal fabric, which is three times as soft as regular cotton. And there are so many great styles and sizes that you can choose from. You can choose from four different cuts, all of which are available in a variety of different colors, like bold, classic, adventurous, and plus they have fun seasonal patterns. I just love it so much. I love them because I I struggle with getting wedgies at the gym. And <laughs> honestly, <laughs> me undies really solves that problem for me. So I, I love them. Um, so why stop at undies? This year, me undies offers matching lounge pants, bralettes, and onesies as well. So obviously, we all need those. And they're all made from the same micromodal fabric as their underwear. So you can't get enough. To get your 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meundies.com slash coffee. That's meundies.com slash coffee for 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. So I did not know that you went on the doctors. That's one thing I don't know about Kale. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't know know that either. Honestly, I came out here. Let's just be clear here. They really low budget and... um, that was already a problem because I'm not getting paid for it. And then I go on it and then it was a waste of my time and nothing came of it. So I said, great, I'll never do this again. So moving on. (laughs) Back to Taylor. I really had no idea that Phil McGraw owned Phil McGraw. That's his last name. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. How I found that out was, is, um, you know, when I was trying to get onto the show, the doctors was not getting back to me. And I also had contacted Dr. Phil because I didn't really know much about that show, but I thought thought that you were on Dr. Phil. So I'm, and that's what I wrote down. That was my mistake. I thought you were on Dr. Phil, not the doctors. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, and that's who I tried to get on. And cause the doctor show never 
you know, con- contacted me back. And then they, Dr. Phil's people contacted me and they said, oh my gosh, like we got your story. We love it. We want to help you. But he does uh, conflict and resolve only. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what Dr. Because, Phil does. That's what Dr. Got Phil on. does? What about Dr. Oz? You know, I, I'm trying to think. I might have uh, tried to reach out to them. But his show was canceled, was it? No, no, I think no? It, I okay. think it's still I was also on. With Dr. Oz. Yeah, Were you? Yeah. How did you like that? I, I out of the doctors and Dr. Oz, yeah. I would have picked Dr. Oz. He was very personable and talked to us off set and stuff like that. Like the doctors, okay. they didn't do that for none me. Of that. Yeah, I Nothing. feel like none of that. Produce, and it was show. literally, I was on for maybe five minutes. Oh yeah, no. But Dr. Oz was like very nice and personal. I don't know how he is now. That was probably yeah seven years ago, eight yeah. years ago. So. But that's still nice though, even at that time. Yeah, I was gonna say Dr. Phil because I got an offer to go on his show whenever I. I had filed for divorce because, of course, there's uh, like a drama story. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I couldn't imagine them bringing your case on to Dr. Phil so it fits more. That's what they said. Yeah. So they're like, you know, we already sent your stuff. They're like, we own the doctor show. Got so it. we sent your stuff so there. So that's how you found out. Yeah. And I just said, yeah, I, I was trying to get on there and I wasn't hearing from them. So that's sure. why I went to Dr. Phil. They're like, oh, okay, perfect. So that's kind of how it happened. I can't watch the doctors because I feel like I, it's so produced. I, I don't, wa- I don't want to. Since being it. on it. Yeah, I've same. Never, well, and to be real, I never even watched it before. So. Neither did neither I. Did I. Didn't I was like, oh, yeah, my booking agent <laughs> well, got this for real. me. So. Yeah, I literally, <laughs> I never even saw an episode. <laughs> oh so I'm God. just like, God. my grandma, my grandma is wild. My grandma is like 90 years old, literally like, like she's 50 and she's wild. She has no filter. And she's like, you know, Tay, I watch that show all the time and that's where you should go. And I'm like, oh, you do watch it, grandma? Why do you think I should go on that one? And she gave me like this whole thing about it. So I was like, okay, well, yeah, I'll, I'll submit. I'll Has see. she boycotted since? So, oh, you know what? I don't, I think she doesn't watch it anymore because she's like, that's horrible. That's and she's right, like, grandma. you need to yeah. call them in. I'm like, grandma, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work that way. That is you know? so crazy. Yeah, she's wow. so funny. So you've done modeling too. Yeah, so you know what? I'm glad you brought that up too. When I was young, <laughs> We're good at this. No, I, you guys do because I, I, I have, I've done so many interviews now and more than half of the stuff I want to talk about, I all, all of a sudden I'm like, I couldn't even say one thing I wanted to, you know, that I that I that's important to We're me. We're not scripted yeah. here. I know so. you guys are amazing. <laughs> you are. You're amazing. When I was young, I used to be with agents and all of that. So mm-hmm. I used to do like commercial modeling. I was never tall enough. I'm only five seven. You have to be minimum five nine. You know to be a real model. So I used to do commercial stuff when I was young and then I, you know, fell in love with my music and I stopped all that. Now since coming out with Chimera Awareness, I am modeling for body positivity. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Wow. That's, that's what awesome. I'm doing. So I'm not I'm don't confuse I am not confused that I'm not a real model. <laughs> you know what I mean cuz Seriously, I mean, there's girls out there slaying it, you know, and they're yeah. like New York and runway and high fashion. That's not what I've done. Would I be open to it? Yes, I would. Okay, <laughs> but that's not what I've done. I'm just trying to do body positivity modeling. And, you know, it's been weird because I have fans that are just so for it. And then I have other people where you would think I'm up there completely naked. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about, you know, your fan base and your following and stuff like that. How yeah. have they reacted to everything? Like, I, I'm, I heard you mention that, you know, people kind of don't believe you. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. So... It's so weird. All the people that, um, you know, heard of me through the Chimera Zone, they're all like diehard fans mm-hmm. and they've like changed my life. Like I'm so grateful for them. I'm so appreciative, you know, of them. But more people that do, that know me personally are the ones that have had issues with it. I'm talking family members. I was about to ask, your fa- how'd your, the oh, rest of your family react? Oh, how did your friends? Family, best friends. I mean, I will well, tell you, I know like who my true people are now. <laughs> but I don't understand how there's a negative way to react to it. The reason why there's a negative way is because of my body positivity photos. I'm in a bathing suit. suit yeah. I a also, bathing suit. Ooh. Or mm-hmm. I have photos. So whoop do But yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? Like you see a ba- people in their bathing suits every day. So why would that be offensive? Oh, and because, because she's getting attention for it. And I guess. And also because I do have some that are topless but where my hair is completely over my boobs. I recently, at the very end of last year, did one that shows about, you know, an inch on each side of cleavage. But people don't understand, so I'm just going to put it to you now. My birthmark starts on 
my left breast, right in the middle of my breast. That's where it starts. And it goes all the way down to where the sun does not shine. So when you are trying to, you know, raise awareness, raise awareness. all of that. It's like, you have yeah. to show it it's in like, order to. It's like, what am I supposed to do? Right. There's all these body positivity models that have uh, like vitiligo, like Winnie Harlow. She's right. unbelievable. Amazing. She's, Amazing. oh, I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. But it's like, she has it on her face, her hands, her arms. So if she wants to once in a while, she doesn't have to like show, you know, anything. Yeah, everything, yeah. But I don't have that option. Right. I can't choose where, where my... my- twin sister is on me the other side of it too is that we all have bodies we're all yeah we all have the you you. know same or similar parts so it's it shouldn't ever be that big of a deal i think just having any type of following though it's super relatable a a nude photo on instagram once did you really and what happened it's the most liked picture out of all my photos there you go. Love it. I'm sorry. I've but I, never posted a I nude. Love it. <laughs> she's like, have no, you ever I'm sent not, a nude? She's yeah. like, yes. <laughs> I know you send lots. I of do nudes. not. I don't send. Any oh nudes. my gosh. Have you ever sent a nude? I am guilty of that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. I am. I am. I'm wild. I just, yeah. But see, that's my thing too. Like, I'm just like, okay, listen, I don't, I really mean this. I'm not putting down any woman that is in this business because I think more power to every woman out there. You know what I mean? But there are some women where my photos literally look like I'm basically fully clothed, like from head to toes compared to what some other women are doing. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's not about comparison, but it's about like, you guys, we all have eyes though. You know what I mean? Like how you said, I'm in a bathing suit or I'm tastefully covering everything I can just to show my physical abnormality. You know what I mean? Like I'm Mm -hmm. not just doing stuff to do it. So it's, it's been really weird with family and friends, um, some strangers, but I have had more support from strangers than I have. That's so weird to me. That's That's so weird to me. I I feel like that's super relatable. I feel, I feel like I can relate to that. Just getting into this business period, Yeah, you know, with like, but I guess this is something that she could have never controlled. This is not something that she's choosing to do that. But I mean, as far as like Chimerism. Yeah. You didn't choose that, and now you're raise, you're using your platform to raise awareness. So I don't see how they could even look Thank at it, you. even even it. with the tastefully, you know, yeah, the pictures. Like yeah. I don't get it. No, I don't I, understand. I, I, do they just think I you like it. made up? Oh, do you want to hear? No, like, well, or, do you want to hear like the biggest thing? Yeah, let's hear it. Because I was so, um, you know, hardcore with my music, but you know. I, no one knows about the label. No one knows it fell through. They think no you're one, lying. They for think the music. all of a sudden I went from music to doing this, not knowing why. And so the biggest thing I get is, is literally, you're a sellout to chimerism. And it's like, um, I was born a chimera. I will die a chimera. And I have to endure health issues every day from chimerism. So you're telling me I'm a sellout for who I really am. It's like, I'm finally living my truth and now I'm a sellout. And I also hear all the time, you can't be a singer and also have chimerism. What? <laughs> yeah. That's like- oh, I, oh, I've got that one so many times. And I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that if I have chimerism, but you can't do anything else. Yeah. You're not allowed to do anything. Yeah, no, I just have to be a sick person, sick person who has yeah. chimerism. chimerism. That's so that's been another huge one. Okay. So we, Lindsay and I have been playing this fun game recently where we just ask each other like this or that or like, would you rather? Okay. So um, I wrote down a couple and... The um, first one is Taco Bell or Chipotle. But if I was going to compare it, I would say Moe's or Chipotle. First of all, not everyone has Moe's. I was going to say, all, I don't know what Moe's is. Right. You don't have it here? No, I don't and have you it. Don't have it no. no, I've and never heard of to it. To me, these are both at least known and they're both generic. But I Mexican feel like food. they are on two totally opposite ends of the spectrum. It's like kind of like comparing. No, it's like if you want generic Mexican, what are you going to go get? Chipotle or Taco Bell? I guess. So what would you pick? I would do Chipotle. Okay. I would. I, I if I'm in a rush, if I was in a rush, I would do Taco Bell. Okay, but I was going to say, if I could be really fair, I don't eat it. I don't Me eat either. it either I don't place. like either one. But I, I thought either. it was good because we do love Mexican food. Yeah. But see, if I could eat Taco Bell every single day. You would. I oh. would eat a Crunchwrap Supreme every single oh. day. That's like my oldest but son I loves also, Taco Bell. I also go to Chipotle like at least once or twice a week. No. Really? See, I'm not yeah. into either oh. one. Yeah, okay. I'm not either. Fruits or vegetables? I do both equally because I'm a vegetarian. Okay. I don't, I'm not a fruit person. I would pick vegetables. I would pick vegetables. No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Dunkin' or Starbucks? Okay. I'm probably going to get slammed for this, but 
I don't, I've never done Dunkin' Donut oh, coffee. Oh my gosh. And I hear that's like the big thing. Yeah. I have done Starbucks. So just because that's all I've done, I'd say Starbucks, but I, that's not fair because I've never had Dunkin' Donut coffee. Do you like Starbucks? Um, I will pretty much only do a green tea. I do like just their green tea, no sweetener, or I do a cold brew. Okay. That's okay. it. Yeah, I don't see, get anything else there. I feel like I've had both. I'm okay. not a big Starbucks person, um, anymore. Okay. And Dunkin' is more like not strong coffee. It's super sweet and they don't offer, oh. yeah, it is super sweet. They don't offer anything like the green teas and stuff like that, which is what I, I also That's, drink like the refreshers, the teas, right. stuff like oh, that. Oh, I, I do do a refresher. Yes. I, I don't do. drink so, those. You're a Dunkin' person now. Yeah. I love Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. I would drink Dunkin' Donuts every day. I but hear about it all the Starbucks. time. I used to be a Starbucks person. Yeah. And you did. You yeah. switched over. I, yeah, I, I switched over to the good side. <laughs> and the more affordable side. Exactly. It's yeah. Much, it's yeah. much cheaper as well. I have heard I was gonna say I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. Um Chinese food or Mexican? Oh, Mexican. Mexican for sure. Yeah. Do they have vegetarian options? Well, as far as Mexican, yeah, I I just kinda always create my own stuff like, oh, taco with black beans, avocado, salsa. Makes sense. Okay. Rice, Makes sense. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I forgot about that stuff. You know what I do? I do occasionally eat fish, but I was a vegetarian my whole life, and I it's once in a blue moon. So what's what's with fish? Pescatarian. Pescatarian. So I I dated one once, and it was awful because I pescatarian. That's what it's called. Yeah, I I don't eat any seafood, so we had nothing. I was eating fried chicken, so it was like not a thing. Yeah, (laughs) didn't really work out. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So, do you still talk to your boyfriend of twenty years? Like, or is that no, on and off? Oh, absolutely not. We. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Really, to keep that one as simple as possible, um, we were together all 2017. That was our last round. Um, his father unfortunately got diagnosed from cancer and passed away. Oh wow! And it was her- it was horrible. His mom had already passed away from cancer as well, so oh. it was really it was horrible. That's horrible. But right after the dad passed away. Um, my boyfriend was like, I want you to move in now. I want to get married now. I want to have, you know, a kid now. Too much too soon. And well, no, it was that he had an issue. I'm going to keep it mildly. He had an issue with the law and had to go through some court stuff and um, wasn't really going to be in the right place for about two years, just legally to have really any of that. that. And um, I just thought we can keep dating, but until you can be like a legal adult, I'm not doing any of that with you. Mm-hmm. And he basically turned around, cheated on me, got a girl pregnant within like four or five weeks. So because of that, I will not speak to him. Wow. Good for you, Thank honestly, because wow. that's toxic. That's, that's not so that's oh, a lot of stress. Was, you are already dealing with enough. You don't need to yeah, deal with that Yeah. And too. like my heart breaks for him. I understand like he's he really has. He's been through the ringer, but it's not an excuse. You right. do not do. Like after we just spent all year, I helped you. You know, we had his dad pass away in the house. Like him and I were basically like doing hospice. I mean, it was horrific. Oh, and oh it's gosh. like I was barely even... Oh, and P.S., he broke up with me, tried the day before my birthday. Oh, great. And then reneged on it. And then I was like, sorry, I'm not speaking to you for a couple of weeks. Like, I need time. And he had already already found- Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're done with him. Yeah. We're yeah. Done. Okay. He's out. <laughs> He's not ever welcome. On oh yeah. No. Done never. and done. He's never coming on the podcast. <laughs> never <ever>. coming <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> not welcome. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah. on. We yeah. appreciate I it. I mean, you guys, seriously, I've done so many interviews now and it's the worst. Like when you just are like awkward and uncomfortable and the people are like, you two are both amazing. You thank are you. so down to earth. You are just relatable. You're kind. You're genuine. I'm serious. You, you girls are the real you. deal. That's I'm so, so glad you sweet. listened. Oh, some people know. do come on without listening, oh, of heck course. No. Oh, but my that's gosh. So and awesome. then that's who are... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. no. I listen listened. to all of your podcasts. You guys are so funny. And I love <laughs> that you really do, though. You guys really like balance each other out. I'm the funny out. one. No. I'm she funny. said, no, you're not. Lindsay's <laughs> no, the funny I was going to say, you are so funny, but then she has times where she, like, you no, guys she are really just, is the funny you guys one. are, no, but you both are. You guys are wild. And I love it too when sometimes, like, you, like you'll just be like, okay, I'm done. And then you'll be like, no, wait a minute, we're not done. No, and like, <laughs> that's in real life too. Yeah, that's so real life. Funny. You guys are amazing. Thank so, you so we much. We appreciate you supporting the podcast oh, and wanting to come on. And where can people find Thank you? you. Uh, my, my Instagram would be great because then I have my website link. Sure, you want right? to say what it is? Yeah, or? so my Instagram is just instagram.com backslash Taylor Mull. 
And uh, my last name is spelled M-U-H-L. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We thank appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It, was, it really was so much fun. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. If you have not followed us on at Coffee Convos Podcast on Instagram, make sure you follow us over there. And if you have not subscribed to us, you can do that by searching the Purple Podcast app on your iPhone, typing in Coffee Convos, click the fifth star, click subscribe. And you can also leave us written comments over there. We love to read those. We're also now available on Pandora. We hope you guys have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. See ya. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.